all the times I've known you You made me want to be a better man Judy Schwartz. Okay. And tell, tell, me, um, tell me what you do. I work at one of the suburban Minneapolis schools, uh, a high school. I work in the main office and I'm in charge of the detentions, the kids who maybe have some problems in the school, in the classroom. Doesn't you'd, have to be in the classroom. You'd have seen me a lot then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'd be surprised at the people that I see. I mean, it's it's people that you don't expect to see, but see, people who maybe have a bad day, you know, yeah. can, can, and everybody has some. Yeah. But um, there are kids who are more chronic than others, you know, yeah. that you see, and there's usually a story, an issue that they're they have. Yeah, that's you mentioned that earlier, um, and they're, you know. I think that's a problem we don't dig deep enough you know you you put a band-aid on it or you punish and you don't delve into what's really going on yeah. so when you were saying that that you 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 sometimes do ask questions and what kind of answers do you get from yeah. the kids well uh, sometimes when we have uh, we'll do a detention and we'll do um, like a one-on-one, -on -one. one person will come in and have det detention with me. And then I can sit and I, with them and ask them questions. And they might be just simple questions, you know, about uh, maybe a subject that they're working, you know, they're working with. And it usually, uh, usually me, when I ask them a question, it'll lead to what they really want to talk about. Um, and um, I had the experience of of doing that, and on a Monday morning, a girl had, uh, or it was at a lunchtime, she had a detention, and I asked her how her weekend was, if she did anything fun, and she said, well, my sister moved out of our foster home and moved into another foster home, and I miss her really a lot, and I was kind of, well, I was shocked, because I had asked her did you do anything fun? And it was uh, really, I didn't, first of all, I didn't know she was a foster child. And then, and her sister is 20 years old and she just turned 17. And I, I'm not sure, you know, uh, I didn't ask enough questions there at the time. And we only had a half hour. And I didn't ask the question why she was in foster care, even at 20, which is good. I mean, if she can still be helped you know, by the foster care system, even at 20, not just be thrown out, you know, into 
you know. Yeah. Never, never land. Some of the states have raised their, the age um, from 18 to 21. Okay. And I think uh, that's very good. That would be great. Uh, and, you know, if, if any state would do it, I think it would be Minnesota. Minnesota has so many great organizations that help kids, that help people with addictions. Um, I, I, we were one of the, I think, one of the first states to ever have um, on a, 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 like a, a Hazelden that you know for for addiction. Do you think eighteen uh, is too young to be sent out onto the streets? Uh, for you know I, kids that are aging out. Um, it you know I think in many cases yes. I mean I, I don't I think there are sometimes when kids might be ready at sixteen. Yeah. Uh, there are, I've seen there was a girl that left it wanted to be emancipated at sixteen in our school. She did, and it worked beautifully for her. She's yeah. 18 now, and she is uh, in college doing well. So I think it makes a difference, but I think you have. To, I think each case is different. Yeah. And I don't think they should just be thrown out because they're 18. Yeah. Do you see the kids fall through the cracks in a situation like that? Oh, many times, yeah. They, they do. Um, if, if they don't ask for help, if they don't, cry you know out for help they, they they will fall through the cracks and it depends on the on the school it depends on the foster worker you know the the, the caretaker or whoever you know is helping them it, it it really is luck if you get someone good you can make it through you can be okay but it really is lucky i i, I just don't think that it's always always going to be good there's there's a lot of kids who really fall through and those are usually the one that the ones that end up in on the street or you know homeless and um it's just it there we need to have some some kind of a, a different kind of a system do, do you think there's a disconnect <clears throat> for instance the other day in uh Hutchison, Kansas, we were talking to a, I believe, um, well, she works for an organization, I can't remember the name, Family Services, something, and she said that a young man was aging out at 18, and he was mentally disabled a little bit, um, he had some mental issues, they went and talked to him, and they're a non-profit, you know, volunteer organization that helps kids that are aging out of foster care, they went and met with him, and he, they said, there's no way that this kid can function out in the world. Mm -hmm. And he was due to be aged out. And there was a disconnect. His, the, the, the person in the government, right, that was supposed to be helping him age out, didn't even know about the case. And so they had to bring it to their attention you know, but had they not been there, this kid would have been put out onto the streets, and that would be it. But they they they've managed to buy him another month, oh. another month. Oh, you know, um, it's tragic though. Yeah, I think it's just tragic when these kids need they need if they can have one person in their life, a mentor or someone that they can go to that can help them through. Um, um, I have to say, in the school that I work in, there we have a mentor program where there, and we also have uh, with uh, adults that will mentor. We have something called a two twelve program. Two twelve being one degree above the boiling point. So uh, it's, and these kids are le become leaders and are trained to become leaders in the school, and they will mentor the kids coming into the school who need help. Um, and they find out a lot of things about the students coming in. So there's a lot of, you know, a lot of things the school can do that, you know, to help the kids get, get through. Do you think one person can make the difference in someone's life? Oh, oh yes. Oh, I, one, absolutely one person can make a difference. You need one person to tell you that you can make it, that, that one person that can believe in you. And, and and you can, I think you can do it. I mean, I'm not not maybe not for everyone, but I I think you, most of the time, if you have one person that believes in you, one person you can go to that you can <coughs> you know.
know will unconditionally be there for you. You can do it. A child could do it. Yeah. Who was that person for you? Oh, probably my mother. I, I, I was very fortunate to have great parents who I could uh, talk to easily. And I had an older sister also that was almost like a parent, so I had like two mothers almost, who, and they, yeah. they were great. Have you seen uh, a child that was on the edge that um, um, a difference was made by one of the teachers or one of the staff at the school? I have. Absolutely. This year, uh, two years ago, now last year it was the girl who was emancipated. She was 16, going to turn 15. No, she's 15, going to turn 16 years old. She, uh, her mother was a drug addict. Uh, she was trying to get off of drugs, and the daughter got a job um, at a, as a cashier in a, a grocery store. She tried to get her mother a job that didn't last. She um, knew her father, but he had been in prison because he abused them and had hurt them. So he was in prison, so there was they didn't have any relationship. She had a brother that had been abused, so there was really... He didn't want anything to do with them. So... Um, uh, she wanted to be emancipated by 16, uh, which was the, you had to be 16 to be emancipated. She went to a place called the Bridge in, in um, I think it was in St. Paul, where she could stay, and she had to take two buses to get to our high school, to get to a bus that would come to the a high school bus, so that was three buses just to get to school, three buses to get home again. Plus then she would go to work many nights and get off at 10 o'clock and have to take a bus back. But she did it, and she was emancipated by 16, and the state helped her to uh, get her apartment, get uh, pay for some of her things, plus she worked a lot. And she is now in college doing so well and very, very happy. Just you can see it. She looks different. She's d doing fantastic, and it's because of one lady who worked in the school, uh, who was a, a receptionist, who saw her and saw something in her, and said, "I want to help her." Went to her and said, "I'm here for you, and I want to be here for you, and I'll stay with you, and I'll, I won't give up on you." And she didn't, and they're like mother and daughter. Wow, that's great. It, and it, I am so, so proud of this friend of mine who did this, so proud of the girl who allowed it and took advantage of it, and um, it and it worked. And yeah. I can see, I mean, it's she's living proof that one person can make a difference. She never had anyone like that in her life. Wow, that's great. Yeah. That's excellent. It, it is great. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Uh, You're welcome. I appreciate you taking the time. Oh, I'm happy to. Okay.